So there are lots of new features in version 2.1. Whether you're milling, whether you're doing three quarter length devices, full foot devices, positive molds, printing, whatever you want to achieve, we've added a whole bunch of new features. Now around the area of 3D printing, what sort of things can we achieve now with the new tools? So I'm gonna take you on a journey through some of the workflows that are possible. Here, for example, we have uh, the ability to bring an image in and size and scale that image to match a foot or to match a known size of shoe, for example. Once I have that information, I can use it to help me design a series of shapes. So in this case here, I'm zoning areas for offloading or loading that I wanna do for this foot. If I bring the insole in, you start to see that we have something um, where we're using the custom design pattern tool, we're using the image sizing to bring shapes together, but it's still not clinical. And clinical is absolutely critical. It's not about having fancy tools if you compromise the clinical capabilities. So if I turn these off and get them out of the way, then I still need to think about the foot. So here I'm doing a total contact all the way through the foot. So now the anatomy of the scan is matched in the insole. And then I can come in and reapply those features that I've created. So here we can see that we have shaped features inside our insole that we can then use uh, for applying other materials later on down the line. So let me show you what I mean. So here, for example, we have the ability to produce a shell that has areas that are recessed out. Why? I might want to put some gel in there. Taking that a little bit further, I can really start to consider now how I'm going to deal with this new material technology that's coming through like TPU whether they are powder-based systems or whether they're FDM doesn't matter because with soft materials you have less issues with uh, the technology. So I can start to think differently about what I'm making but no one really knows yet what the ideal TPU insole looks like. So for example here this could be a very fancy design but is it too heavy when it's printed in TPU? So our customers are already starting to think a little bit differently so for example here, this is an example of a design that could be used for TPU printing on FDM or powder-based systems, where the forefoot area is, is added afterwards. So you're keeping your print size down and your material can be removed in quite high quantities to get the weight out as well. So what does this look like? Well, this is a customer here, Adam Mazig in Israel, who has created this design, and he was happy to show it to the whole of the FitFoot community and to you to show you what's possible. So here, this is an EVA device. Is this the future of insoles? I don't know. And the key really is it's up to you, the users, to be able to decide what the future is. And the tools are in the software to give you the opportunity to think differently now. I mean, here's another example where we can design a 3D model that can be exported as separate solids. So in this case, we're looking at color printing on a system like the HP, where we're applying recesses inside of that design. And we're taking the other features and printing them perhaps in a completely different material set on a cheaper system. So I'm reducing the amount of volume that I'm printing in my expensive equipment. And then perhaps I'm using FDM with different materials like glass filled nylon here or TPUs here in the posting. And the next thing I can do with that then is I can assemble them like Lego onto the surface of my part. And what I end up with is something like this here, where I end up with a, a device that is now a hybrid of 3D printing. This really changes the way you think about 3D printing because rather than printing one thing uh, as one homogeneous shape, you can now break it down and print things differently and have a production facility that is a combination of technologies to achieve better results at a lower cost. So I hope that's been useful to give you some ideas on how to think differently about 3D printing. The world is changing. And the most important thing I'll leave you with, though, is never, ever, ever compromise the clinical outcome that you need for your patients just so it looks good. OK, it, it is a byproduct of 3D printing. The main purpose of 3D printing is to enable you to make devices in a different way. It doesn't compromise the clinical outcome at all. It just gives you more choice to try different ideas out. 
So if you found any of this useful, give me a shout and I can take you through it in more detail. And thanks for listening.